The plan for today is that I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the course and course logistics and whatnot, but not a lot, because you can read about that in the course website, and then we'll have more to talk about after you've thought about what you've read. So I'll spend a few minutes talking about the course and the pieces of the course, but then we're going to leap right in and, uh, and really start working toward doing some physics. The, this course has a lot of, of pieces that fit together. So there's a textbook, there's a homework system, there's labs, there's lectures, there's tests. And the, the thing that holds this all together that connects it is the course website. Okay, so you should find the course website, you should bookmark it, you should, you should check it often because there'll be messages there information about labs and tests and whatnot, and it links to all the pieces of the course. So let's see what it looks like. It, you can actually get to the course website simply by typing courses.ncsu.edu, which is easy to remember. And then you get to this Wolfware page where you can select physics and physics 205M. And all the Physics 205M sections actually share the same course website, but you can find me and click on Home Page, and you come to this Home Page. And so courses.ncsu.edu is easy to remember. Uh, here are already some announcements. When do the labs start? Check the course website. Uh, how do you find your instructors? Here's me, here's my email, office hours. Uh, what is the grading based on? Well, here's the course syllabus. Here's about grades. It tells you that there are three 90-minute tests, which are worth 45% of final exam, homework, labs, class participation. So everything's here, information about tests. Um, so the course website is the place to go. Uh, it, you will do homework through WebAssign. Here's a link from the course website to WebAssign. Who has not used WebAssign before? OK, not very many people. See if you can find someone, a friend to, to help you out. There is The first thing you have to do is an assignment which just gets you oriented to WebAssign. I think most of you have done that. Uh, we WebAssign. Ends up when you log into WebAssign, you'll you'll see a page like this, and you get to use it for a few days free, but you do need to pay. Um, and you'll find a set of assignments, and you'll see that uh, actually you have two homework assignments that are due on Wednesday. So you're going to have homework due every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. on days when there are class is scheduled. The homework for when that's due before Wednesday's class is an intro to WebAssign. It asks you to read the course syllabus and answer some questions to make sure you've read it and then talk about it. On Friday, there's homework on the things that we're going to start covering today and we'll continue to do next time. So the course website, uh, there's a course calendar, which is also important, um, which says there's no labs this week. Here's what's happening Monday. Here's what's happening Wednesday. These are your reading assignments. When's the first test? Let's scroll down and find out. Looks like it's uh, Tuesday, February 9th, 7.30 to 9 p.m. during the time that you've reserved for a problem session in the evenings. So all the information you need about the course logistics is here. Uh, there's a textbook, Matter and Interactions, Volume 1, 3rd Edition. Do you really need the 3rd Edition? You basically really do need the 3rd Edition because a number of things have been changed and significantly improved since the 2nd Edition. There are several options for getting it. The least expensive is to buy an electronic version through WebAssign. I think it's something like $17.25. You get the entire textbook on flash paper. Uh, it has the advantage that you can't lose it or forget it 
It's always there when you're doing your homework. You can also get a, a paper copy um, to put under your pillow. You need to have one of these clickers, these turning point clickers. How many people actually have one? Good. All right. Um, you can get them at the bookstore. Uh, we use them to work together during class and to give you credit for participating in class. And also, we're going to use them every week for quizzes. So quizzes are 7% of your grade. You need a clicker to take the quizzes every Wednesday at the end of class. Um, you will register your clicker. There will be directions on the course website. You'll register your clicker through WebAssign. An assignment will pop up asking you to type in the, the six-digit hex number on the back of your clicker. And that's how we'll know it's you and give you credit for what you're doing. Uh, and we'll start doing this today just to do it. One of the reasons we use clickers in class is that a 75-minute class is a long class. And this is a time that many of you are probably not used to having a class. So it's easy to have your mind wander to start thinking about dinner. And so we want to keep you active, keep you thinking about things. And also give you a chance to test your knowledge, to make sure that you've understood what we've just done, that you can apply it, that it makes sense to you, and that you know what you need to go and work on after the classes. The goal of the lectures is really going to be to, uh, to hit the most important points, the high points of the material, and to give you some practice trying to think and reason about some things that are either slightly difficult or new or just important. Um, if you aren't able to answer the clicker questions correctly, that should be a message to you that you have work to do after lecture, that you need to go and review and make sure these questions are answered. The one thing I will say about tests and grading right now is that the tests and the final exam count a lot of your grade. It ends up being, I think, 70% of the grade. It's therefore tempting to think that the way to do well in the course is just to study hard for tests. Unfortunately, that about 95% of the time, that doesn't work well. And the problem is that it's too late by the time you get to the test to really learn the material well enough to do well in the tests. What you need to do is use the clicker questions and the homework to keep you really on top of the material. So you should not let a week end with unanswered questions. Uh, if you had trouble doing a homework problem, couldn't do it by yourself, that should be a sign to you that you need to get this worked out. You need to understand it by the end of the week. Don't let it go. When the test time comes, it should just be a review of material that you're really on top of. This is, this is, this is really the only way to make it through the class successfully. Most people need to pass this class in order to go on and take other classes. Um, so the way to do that is to really use the homework to help you identify things that you have trouble doing yourself and to make sure that you've really mastered the material. Uh, so what you should do is I would suggest that before lecture you look at the course calendar look at the sections we're going to cover, and just flip through the book to see what they're about, just so you have some idea what words you're likely to hear in lecture. You have some questions about what we might be doing. After lecture, go through, read the assigned sections carefully before you do the homework, uh, and, and really try to not let those unanswered questions go. OK, we'll say more about this. Uh, after you've had a, after we've had a little experience. <clears throat> <clears throat>